um, dissent and criticism of religion has always been a crucial aspect of free expression. Historically, it's been intrinsically linked with anti-clericalism and dismantling that which is deemed taboo, sacred, and untouchable by the gatekeepers of power. Such criticism has been key for human progress and is still needed. In the age of ISIS, this criticism is a life and death necessity for those living under Islamism's boot. So yes, I am Charlie, no ifs and buts. Those who condemn the massacre in Paris but blame Charlie for offending Muslim sensibilities, implying that they somehow got what they deserved, have bought into the Islamist narrative that Muslims are more offended by cartoons than mass murder. This is validated by multiculturalism as a social policy and cultural relativism, which sees Muslim communities and societies as homogeneous and one and the same with the religious right. So even though there is a rich historical tradition, both artistic and historical, of depicting Muhammad, Islam's prophet, over many centuries, it's deemed offensive today. And despite many Muslims or those labeled as such having sided with Charlie, it is the terrorists, the fascists, who are deemed to be the authentic Muslims. This homogenized culture of offense discounts the many believing secularists, feminists, free thinkers, and also atheists and socialists amongst those deemed Muslim. It ignores the widespread dissent and resistance, which can also be seen in the response to Charlie. An Algerian copy editor, Mostafa Orad, was gunned down in Charlie's hallway. Many Muslims joined the rallies and held up Je suis Charlie signs or pens. A French Muslim cafe owner was threatened for putting up a Je suis Charlie sign in his East London cafe. Lassana Bathili, the Malayan born Muslim employee, hid employee customers in the Paris kosher supermarket and as a result saved lives. Even in Iran, a theocracy where blasphemy, heresy, apostasy, enmity against God, and 130 other offenses are punishable by death. There are many examples of solidarity. This is one of them, Nasrin Sutude, a human rights lawyer who's been in prison. She showed her solidarity with the journalists at Charlie Hebdo. And many journalists tried to join a rally in support of Charlie, but were stopped by security agents using clubs and chains. An Iranian newspaper was shut down for publishing this photo in solidarity with Charlie. The cartoon is titled, This is what happens if you show solidarity with Charlie in Iran. Another cartoon on this, the closure of the Iranian newspaper, and it's labeled our very own IS. In Tur Turkey, two columnists from a daily are facing investigation for religious defamation after featuring the Charlie cover. And cartoonists from across the world, from Egypt to Lebanon to Qatar and to Jordan have taken a stand with Charlie against the terrorists. And still we are told that Charlie offended Muslims and must be held to account. Clearly, not all Muslims were offended and even those who were did not go on to kill for it. What is packaged as the culture of offense is really Islamism's imposition of blasphemy laws and theocracy under the pretext of respect for Muslim sensibilities. Only in Europe, of course, does this far-right fascist movement use offense to silence and censor. In countries where they have state power, there is no need for such niceties. In Saudi Arabia, in Iran, in Pakistan, in Iraq, in Syria, the offenders are called what they are, apostates and blasphemers, and legally murdered in broad daylight in the same way that Charlie Hebdo's journalists were executed. Terrorism and indiscriminate violence, including via Sharia laws, have been pillars of Islamist rule for decades, aiding in creating a climate of fear and as a warning to those who refuse to submit. 
This culture of offense absurdly implies that civility and manners are all that are needed to stop abductations, abductions, abductions, <laughs> abductions and the slaughter of generations in Iran, Algeria to Nigeria. But the culture of offense is a smokescreen, in my opinion. It serves to legitimize Islamist terror and blame victims. It misses the point. Islamism is an international far-right movement that has murdered innumerable Charlie Hebdo's over several decades across the Middle East, North Africa, South Asia, including many Muslims who have dared to speak or mock or just live 21st century lives prohibited by the Islamists. Being a woman, being a free thinker, being gay, being unveiled or just improperly veiled according to them, being an atheist, going to school, driving a car, having sex, falling in love, laughing out loud, dancing, offends them. Calling for civility, censorship, silence, or respect for the offended is merely heeding the Islamist demand for submission at the expense of dissenters. But as Rosa Luxemburg has said, freedom is always, is always the freedom of dissenters. So yes, I am Charlie, but I am also the many Muslims, ex-Muslims, and none who dissent day in and day out at great risk to themselves. I am Raif Badawi, sentenced to 10 years in prison and a thousand lashes for a website promoting public discussion of religion and politics, which has been deemed insulting of Islam by the Saudi regime. I am 30-year-old blogger Sohail Arabi, here with his five-year-old daughter, sentenced to execution in Iran for insulting the Prophet on Facebook. I am poet Fatima Naout on trial for insulting Islam in Egypt due to her criticism of Islamic animal slaughter. I am 28-year-old Mauritius, Mauritian journalist and anti-slavery activist Mohammed Sheikh Mohaite, who's been sentenced to death in December for insulting the Prophet. I am 32-year-old Egyptian journalist, Bishoy Bulus Armia, who's been given a five-year prison sentence for causing sectarian strife and insulting Islam because he reported on the persecution of Christians in Egypt. I am the artists and writers in the Gaza Strip who are facing a campaign calling for their murder for insulting Islam. I am Jakarta Post Editor-in-Chief, Mehdi Atama, who's accused of blasphemy for a caricature of ISIS, which according to an Islamist group which filed a complaint, has insulted Islam. I am Algerian novelist Kamal Daoud, who has called for his execution because of insults to Allah. I am bloggers Yi and Li, 25 and 26, charged in Malaysia under the Sedition Act for insulting Islam and Ramadan on Facebook. I am women's rights campaigner Soad al-Shamari, who's been in prison since October last year on accusations that she's insulted Islam and the Prophet in Saudi Arabia for demanding an end to male guardianship rules for women. I am 47-year-old British-Iranian Roya Nobah, who was sentenced to 20 years in prison in Iran for insulting Islam on Facebook. All she said was that the Iranian regime is too Islamic. I am 49-year-old mother of five, Asya Bibi, who's been in prison for five years in Pakistan awaiting execution for blasphemy. I'm 27-year-old Mohammad Amir Aslani, hanged in September last year in Iran for insulting Prophet Jonah and making innovations in religion through interpretations of the Quran. And I am Mohammad Shakil Aouj, Dean of the Faculty of Islamic Studies at the University of Karachi, who was shot dead by gunmen in September last year, two years after being accused of blasphemy. The list goes on and on. So yes, I am Charlie, Raif, and Roya. No ifs and buts. I am. We are all of them. Thank you.